Russia Ukraine war. Russia military begins drills on nuclear weapons over comments by France, UK. Russian forces started military drills near Ukraine, simulating the use of tactical nuclear weapons. This is in response to what Russia from the United States of America, the United Kingdom, and their allies. In a move raising tensions with the West, Russia launched military exercises near Ukraine, simulating the use of tactical nuclear weapons. Tactical nuclear weapons. This comes after comments by leaders from the US, UK, and their allies that Russia views as threats, particularly regarding increased Western involvement in the ongoing conflict. Russia specifically cites comments by French President Macron regarding sending regarding sending European troops and UK Foreign Secretary Cameron's remarks on Ukraine using Western weapons inside Russia. Joining us to discuss is an international analyst, Paul Ejime and European Union International Conflicts Analyst, Thomas Leroy. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you for inviting me. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Okay, uh, Thomas, I would want to start. What's the general impression you have and what's the opening remark you want to give regarding uh, this uh, seemingly peculiar war scenario that is playing out yes i think i think it's it's been expected i think in the within the european union because it comes following weeks of sort of discussions and comments in the media from from french prime minister from the uk prime minister in terms of support uh, towards ukraine which they they won't give up they want to keep supporting ukraine but yet we see the public opinions within the european union and within the usa uh, turning more against support because I think European people are, are starting to see the cost and the amount of money that's being sent to, to Ukraine for weapons. So I think Vladimir Putin there is just reinstating a bit of strength and a bit of uh, that he's in control of these regions as uh, Ukraine seems to be suffering a bit on the Eastern Front. I would have supposed that uh, ordinarily, it, it, it tends to give the impression that maybe Putin is also getting a bit wary, getting a bit wary because he wants an early end, earlier than one had researched, because one had researched that it was in it for the longer. But the moment tactical nuclear weapons uh, start being used, it, it, the war would naturally be wrapped up earlier. So is Putin getting tired of the war too? Is he not is he not now getting to a position where he seems paranoid that uh, he does not want uh, another Afghanistan, the second Afghanistan uh, inflicted on the on the Russian armed forces? I would respond to that. I would I would give two points of view. I think this this is one side of the view. I think it, we have very little information, obviously, as to what Putin thinks. But I think there's two points of views. Either he's trying to play this, either he wants to end the war quickly, and he's trying to scare the Europeans. I think maybe he's trying to show the Europeans that if they decided to to intervene in Ukraine, it would be a real problem for them, and that they would be faced with a real opponent in Russia because Russia has the backing. So possibly, I think he's trying to affect, firstly, public opinion within the European Union, because in the European Union, obviously, there is a big, there's support for Ukraine, which remains. But I don't think people would want to go to war. There's a disfavor that France and the UK engage themselves on the ground. So I think Putin is trying to scare the, the, the British public and the French public, but also the politicians and show them, Look, this this is a possibility that you have to go, but you won't be able to. It will be a problem for you. Okay, Paul Jimmy, how would you want to? How would you want to start? So, uh, like uh, Thomas has said, in um, politics as in war, there is what you call um, balance of uh, error, or balance of threat. I think um, when um, you notice that each time 
uh, one country, a nuclear power, uh, decides to uh, come top up the use of um, of that weapon, um, the others who have it will also um, uh, ratchet up their own, um, you know, talk and um, rhetoric. But it has never really come after the, you know, the uh, the use of uh, nuclear bomb in um, in the uh, war against Hiroshima and um, Nagasaki. Uh, it has never been, there hasn't been anyone where it's been used. And so I think they are getting to the precipice where um, they will all tell, make a um, show of it, like uh, shadow, shadow boxing. Um, but uh, nobody should but, underestimate but, what, what but, Putin can do. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, there's, a, there's a major difference between the use of tactical nuclear weapons and strategic nuclear weapons. Tactical nuclear weapons are small nuclear warheads that could be used in a local in a local environment and that will not necessarily spread beyond the area of use, unlike strategic nuclear weapons. So tactical, the, the, the fact that Russia is uh, rehearsing all uh, organizing drills around the use of tactical nuclear weapons in itself speaks to the fact that uh, maybe the guy is weary. The guy is weary and wants an early end. Uh, so that difference no, must no, also... I'm... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, uh, uh, you know, you said in the beginning that the European countries are also not, um, they are provoking, as it, as it were, uh, some action from um, from Russia. Because if you notice in the last two or three months, the um, a pendulum of the war seems to be swinging on the side of uh, Russia. Um, uh, 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 Ukraine is taking um, uh, bad heat, and that is why you hear the country, the, the leader, uh, Zelensky, uh, uh, beg, virtually begging for 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 uh, more weapons because um, he feels that um, um, Russia uh, Putin is um, uh, gaining some some upper hand in in the war, and so what so, is now the pre no pre the uh, French president now um, in order to make you know tell people that they are still behind Ukraine. Uh, President Macron was talking about the possibility of having uh, foods on the ground in um, of uh, European NATO troops in in in, in um, uh, Ukraine. The same thing, um, uh, 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 you, the UK um, Foreign Minister uh, Cameron was also saying the same thing. So Russia is responding to that to say, listen, uh, these threats you better be warned because if we now see any uh, uh, greater involvement. Um, it, it appears, you know, when you you are getting to the to the uh, uh, what is it called? Um, a ten yard box of uh, of uh, of uh, a team. What you are now trying to do is uh, almost trying to pull the trigger or to to fire the um, uh, to shoot. So he is telling them, listen, if you do that, I am going to do. I understand the the difference between tactical and strategic. But Russia has about 1,600 or so warheads that it can deploy that is called, um, you know, the tactical. That is tactical. Tactical warheads, yes. Yes. These are tactical missiles. We're talking about missiles. Yes. So whether you, what we're talking about is weapons. And these are missiles that it can deploy. That is what they call tactical. But then, when it becomes full-scale nuclear, then you can use them, um, you know, gas. You can use all kinds of things that you can you you will use in doing that. But here they are talking about tactical. I understand what that means. Mm -hmm. So, but I don't, I don't, the, 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 yeah, Paul. yeah. Will my, you let me land? <laughs> okay. yeah. I, I, I would also go down. I would also go down the line of of what Paul said, as in that I, I think Russia is really trying to show the muscle. I think the Europeans, the Europeans, it, we're going into a similar pattern as the Cold War in the 1950s. The the, the, the yeah. European Union trying to show muscle. They're saying, look, we're ready to go the extra mile if you're winning this war. 
And so Russia is responding in a similar way. Look, we're ready to use nuclear weapons. I don't think, I, I hope and I believe that as such that none will use them, but they're both showing their muscle. They're both showing their strength at the same time. Paul and Leroy, Paul and Leroy, listen to me, gentlemen, so that you are, you saw that you will not only, you will not only educate me, but then educate the real public. Now, I had earlier accentuated the difference between tactical and strategic nuclear weapons. Now, given the reasoning that the two of you are positing, the seeming incoherence in that reasoning is that ordinarily, if Putin wants to scare France, Britain, and even the United States of America, he shouldn't or he wouldn't have been emphasizing the drills on tactical weapons because tactical weapons will not reach France. Tactical weapons will not get to the uh, United Kingdom. Tactical yeah. weapons will not get to the United States, United States of America. Yeah. So, I, I think it, it's more of a counter as to ground troops. I think it would be more, so for example, France said that they would send ground troops. So I think it's more the threat says, look, if you send ground troops, you're going to have 10,000 French people on the ground. I'm going to use a nuclear weapon against them in, in eastern Ukraine. And I think European countries are very scared because they're the, in, in, in Europe, as democracy works, they, people would not vote for a president that would send 10,000 French people to get slaughtered uh, in, in eastern Ukraine. So I think it's a direct response okay. to what okay. Macron said. Let, let, let me let Paul uh, uh, respond to this. Uh, Paul, yeah. the point as we speak is that the deals are coming after the approval over after the delays in the U.S. Congress, the deals are coming after the approval of the 60 plus billion U.S. dollars. And this is speaking to the fact, to me, is speaking before the approval, Ukraine was running short of ammunition and weapons, and Russia was gaining ground. But immediately, that phone was approved. Now you have Putin authorizing drills in the use of tactical weapons. Does that not is that not telling the world that this man is scared now that there are more resources for Ukraine to rehab and elongate the war? How would you want to respond to that? Paul. Let's put it, let's put it in context. Um um, like um, uh, Thomas and I are emphasizing, it is um, the immediate, um, uh, uh, you know, cause of what do, uh, Putin is doing is the fact that the French president has talked about the fact that they want they can send ground troops, and then uh, the British Prime Minister Cameron was also no, not Prime Minister, Foreign Minister or Foreign oh, Secretary was also uh, saying making a similar statement, which means that it is no longer um, European or NATO countries staying uh, very far off, but they now want to come very close. They are bringing the war to uh, Russian doorsteps. And now Putin is telling them, listen, well, I'm going to give you a bloody nose because your troops on the ground will be, will not, um, are reachable with, um, you don't need long um, uh, range uh, missiles to get them. And also, remember that there are countries that are neighboring uh, 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 Russia, who, that are NATO countries. Those ones, for instance, um, uh, 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 Estonia, uh, Latvia, Poland, all of them are getting jittery. And they will rather be, with, with, will tell their uh, uh, other countries that are far off that, listen, if you do this, we are going to be, you know, we are going to get the direct heat from this. So that will deter them. And, and um, Putin knows that very well. That um, he's, a, a master, he's a strategist, let's, let's put it that way. You have seen how long it has taken him. Russia has taken um, casualties in this war, but they are just waiting at a um, certain time to, to, to move on and um, to launch. Um, and that is what has happened. And it's now hurting uh, Ukraine, and um, that is why it, uh, their president is crying to say, give us weapons. But having, getting that weapons that you talked about is not enough. People have to operate these weapons. And so 
um, the allies of uh, Ukraine are saying, well, we may have now to come uh, with troops to help you, uh, both to uh, learn how to use but these uh, weapons. And then oh, um, but, oh. uh, Russia is saying, if you do that, this is the consequence. Yes. Oh, I, I think that is virtually wrong. The only country that has mouthed putting boots on the theater of war in Western Europe has been France, Macron. All other, all other European countries, indeed, NATO members, lambasted it. The Germans, that's the most powerful economy in Western Europe, were openly saying that that was Macron's opinion that was not signed up to by them and other European countries. And the only thing that the, the British Foreign Secretary said was that Ukraine could use British weapons. They never, he never said, and he didn't have the powers anyway because he, he, he is not the prime minister. He only said Ukraine could use British weapons, not that they wanted to send soldiers, foot soldiers to Ukraine. So I'm listening to you and Paul, and I'm putting one, the facts in context relative to the conduct of Putin. And I'm, I'm sitting there now thinking, okay, let's, let's just be a bit distant from this and look at things from the fact, you know, from the angle of the facts. Why is Putin jittery after the U.S. Congress's approval of that 61 billion U.S. dollars for Ukraine? Why is Putin jittery when it's becoming obvious that the recent gains he had made may, even if it's not reversed, may be stalled because of the rearming, you know, of Ukraine. And yet, Russophiles like you and, and Leroy, uh, Leroy you, are be, you are given a, a, a posture of strategic superhumanity to Putin, who has somebody who presumed that he was going to run over Ukraine in two weeks, and two years down the road, he's still stuck. He's still stuck in that in that in that seeming war of attrition. Mm. I wouldn't want to respond to that. Uh, I think, Leroy. I think Putin, I, I, I agree with you that I think Putin's stuck in a bit of a, a tough war and he thought he would run it quicker. But at the end of the day, Putin has has more resources, has more resources than Ukraine. I think Ukraine is a real problem right now on the front, is the lack of soldiers. And I think Putin knows that if he goes on the long run, that the European countries and the USA will stop giving money at some point. So I think although Putin is stuck in a longer war, I don't think he'll mind it too much. So I think also that the fact that today he's announced, well, today or two days ago, he did the test of a nuclear weapon. This is also something towards Russian public opinion. This is also seen, he wants to, also wants to prove that he's strong. This is something also for the Russian public opinion to show that, look, we're doing well, we're advancing, we're not losing the war, and we've, we've put those weapons there. So I, I, I would... I would... Uh, uh, Leroy, if one were to stand on the good logic you have just posited now, one ordinarily would have thought that Putin wouldn't have resorted to nuclear weaponry. It would ordinarily have dragged the war because, like you rightly stated, Ukraine is running short of personnel, Mm -hmm. Because uh, Ukraine, relative to, to Russia, is a small country population-wise. Two, apart from that, Ukraine is also not quite well-resourced as, you know, as Russia is, because Russia could, from, from petroleum products to mineral resources, from very distant, but... Putin is not walking that path now. Putin is walking a path that will inevitably, if used, tactical, tactical nuclear weapons, that will inevitably put the world to an early hand. And that may ultimately bring a problem because that would, not be a, that would not have been a decisive victory. And he could elicit some rebellious character in, in, in his, uh, in, in his uh, ranks. In Russia, I don't know if I'm making a point yeah. that anyone of you want to take on, wants yeah. to take on. 
listen, what is that nuclear or non-nuclear? Um, this war, nobody, if you ask Putin, I think he probably miscalculated if he thought it was going to end uh, very early. He miscalculated. Neither does um, uh, Ukraine or NATO people that are supporting it because that is the reason they say never start a war because you never can tell how it will end. But listen, this is not the first time that Putin is um, ma uh, make threat, making threats about using nuclear weapons. I hope you understand that. But here, it is all the difference is that this, the NATO allies of um, Ukraine have said something that requires his um, reaction. And he is, uh, this is the way he's responding to it. To so say, listen, I have, um, there are many options that I have in this war. One can just be put um, too many troops on the ground, which I, I will have number Ukraine by that. Another one is also to employ nuclear, non-tactical nuclear uh, uh, arsenals. And then before you can even talk about nuclear, you know? So, and this way, of course, uh, NATO allies will support uh, um, uh, Ukraine in using with um, nuclear, some of them are, many of them are major nuclear powers. But here is somebody who is saying, listen, Ukraine is um, how many, 40 something or 30 something million. Russia is about 143 million. And there are countries that are neighboring um, uh, 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 Russia that belong to NATO that are small, you know, for instance, Estonia is uh, one point something million. Some of them are less than two million. And these people, he will bring fear. I mean, that is part of war. You have to make sure that um, you 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 use what what you have to get what you what you what you want. And that is what he's using to to be strategic about what he's doing. To say, listen, and he has about a, a thousand five uh, five hundred and fifty-eight. Um, uh, uh, you know, warheads of these missiles, these ones that you now call uh, tactical or non-strategic, which you can deploy. And they are very devastating. Forget the fact that they are not nuclear. They are devastating because they they reach where the distance where you they are programmed to get. And it will get to the people that are close by. These are neighbors. And then those, if... Um, allies of um, Ukraine decide to bring their soldiers, the, these weapons or missiles will not separate. They, don't, they won't tell um, a British uh, soldier from an American soldier. So this is what uh, Putin is telling them, that if you can do that, then I will roll on this and then get to, um, um, it becomes, it will be destructive. It will be more lethal than what we are seeing now. But I can tell you that there is, they will get to a point where they get what, what I call the, um, the, the, the balance of, uh, of threats. All of them will do this to say we are going to do this, we'll use that, okay. but you probably will never come to that. Yeah. There's also another, uh, somebody the, 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 will get tired and this war will end on the table. Oh, like oh, all okay. war uh, is going to be oh, on the, the, the oh, table. Just, oh, just for, just for uh, you know, to make sure that our viewers get the facts right. Tactical nuclear weapons are nuclear weapons. It's just that they are ta tactical nuclear weapons, unlike strategic nuclear weapons, are nuclear weapons that are small nuclear warheads to yes. be used in an enclosed environment, a local war theater or a local environment. Yes. They are as devastating within the limited area where it is used. I think we're saying the same thing. That's what I have said. No, you, you, you were having maybe a fraudulent sleep by saying that although it's not nuclear weapons, so I needed no. to, to oh, correct no. that. I didn't say it's not nuclear. That is, it may not be as devastating as the main. Okay, I said, that's I, I fantastic. I by saying fantastic. the main... Uh, I don't know that. Yeah. I, I said, I said fraudulent sleep. It could be tongue, uh, slip of tongue. So okay. you said it about twice. I felt I, I wanted you to learn before okay. I make that correction. Right. Um, uh, Paul, uh, sorry, uh, Thomas, Yes. Okay. We uh, are where uh, we are now. We are where we are now. And let's yes. be very honest with ourselves. Uh, the story is not looking is not looking good. It's not looking good because 
uh, in so much as one wants to believe that Putin as an ex-intelligence officer uh, knows that uh, the um, mad concept, that is mutual assured destruction, is still is still a principle of war between even after the Cold War. If he uses tactical nuclear war X, uh, he may also get what he, what he never bargained for. So uh, what would be your closing remark on the direction that this war may go? I, For me, I think for now, it's it seems to be just a game of words. And I think also we have to consider, I didn't add, but from a European point of view, we have the European elections coming up in two weeks' time, and we have a divided EU parliament. So we have Hungary, we have Poland, there used to be, we had Slovakia, we have Italy, who are a bit more divided on uh, the Russian question. So I think this is also a war of words with in light of timing with the European election to divide a bit more Europe and to fight the EU from the inside from a political point of view. So I think for now, we it's 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 under control, I, I hope anyway. And I think it's it's not something to worry out in the immediate, but let's see what the future holds. But it's it's a grim war. It's a grim war and it's not going to end in a nice way. On that note of measured optimism, gentlemen, I want to thank you for having enlightened the public uh, and I wish you all the best. Uh, thank you, uh, we Africans, We Africans are a very prayerful lot. I just hope and pray that the madness will still be measured and it will not go beyond what any one of us envisages. Thank you. We're going on a short break now and when we're back, we take on the issue of the reinstated Emir of Kano. Thank you. Yeah, prayer and work. Prayer uh, without work is, uh, it is, won't give you the results. <laughs> uh, okay. I know, mm -hmm. and I agree with you on that. I agree with you on that. But with, with a character like Putin, we can only play. I yes. don't know what's in his mind. <laughs> yes, he's a crazy guy. He's a crazy guy. Yeah. He, he's strategic. He's strategic. You gotta go. But he's a crazy guy. He's a terrible man and a crazy guy. But he's. You never know. You never know what a. You never know what a man will do to preserve his position. For Putin, is all about preserving his, you know, autocracy. Yes. I wish him all the best. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay, thank, thank you for having us. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank you. It's been a show. We're trying to uh, connect with Kano. Things are still very febrile in Kano. Uh, uh, resource persons are a bit itchy. At this juncture, we want, we have decided to move uh, the topic to tomorrow. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are sorry that the show has to end at this juncture, and uh, the Kano issue will be better discussed tomorrow. This is where the show wraps up. I am Bola Oba. Have a good evening. <laughs>